Hi, my name is Dean and I work at Sun Tactics. We make solar chargers for your USB devices like phones. But today we're going to show you how to make a solar charger that will charge your laptop for under $100. A lot of our customers have been asking us for this. It's a small system. It consists of a panel, a battery, and a couple other parts. We also like to call this thing like a micro off-grid system. Also useful for power outages and running other little small appliances, including CPAP machines. Welcome. In this video presentation, I'm going to teach you or attempt to teach you how to construct a small do-it-yourself off-grid solar system that actually supplies AC power. Before we move on with this video, we do have to look at this diagram. So the objective of this system is to build a solar laptop charger for close or under $100. I like to call this a micro off-grid solar power system because that's what it is. It produces AC power from a solar panel. Not only can it charge a laptop, it could also run small TVs, lights, you could charge rechargeable tools, you can even charge a rechargeable portable CPAP machine. If you want more power, it's certainly easy. You just scale it up, maybe add another panel, add another battery and you can perhaps run a small refrigerator for a couple days. So let's talk about these components a little bit more in detail. We need a solar panel, we need a solar charge controller, we need an AGM battery, we need some wiring, we need a cigarette lighter connector, and we will need an inverter. And we will also need a fuse, which is right here. This is an inline fuse. So starting with the solar panel, solar panel is a standard 20 watt, 12 volt solar panel. And from the solar panel, we are going to make a connection from it through some wiring that may come with the solar panel, may not, but it, it's a little cable. You want to make it about 20 feet long. And connect it up to the solar charge controller. And from the solar charge controller, we're gonna use like 24 gauge wires, or a little maybe thicker, to connect up to the battery. The battery is a standard, what they call an AGM battery. This is what you can use in your search when you're looking for one of these batteries. AGM 12 volt battery. You wanna use at least a four amp hour AGM battery. Then we're gonna need some wires that are a little thicker, that come off the battery, go through a fuse, and connect up to a cigarette lighter adapter. These are a little thicker because they're gonna draw a little bit more power once the laptop is connected up into the system. And lastly, we're gonna need an inverter. An inverter is what converts the battery power and does some magic, takes the 12 volts from the battery and converts it into 120 volt AC power. And once you have that, you're set to go and you can charge your laptop, plug it right into the inverter and you will be solar charging your laptop. Well, let's uh, continue on and try to build one of these things. Okay, let's get this party started. Here are the parts, here are the parts that you need to build a laptop charger from solar. Don't forget that. First thing you need out of all these parts is a solar panel. 20 watts will do. You need a solar charge controller. And you need a battery. You need some sort of inverter. In this case, is the one we're using. You need a cigarette lighter adapter. You need an inline fuse holder with a fuse. That's about 10 amps. You need about 24 gauge wire here, red and, red and black, if possible. And you need some about 14 gauge wire right here, 
red and black if possible. And some various crimps to hook up, hook things up. And pretty much two tools for right now for now. A wire stripper and a screwdriver. All this stuff, most of the stuff, this solar panel, charge controller, battery, inverter, crimps, everything can be bought online. A lot of these you can also get locally. This stuff you can probably get locally, you know, at your hardware stores. So this is what I like to call a micro grid or a micro off grid solar system. So here we go. We're going to start building this thing. Okay, let's start by talking about the solar panel. Solar panel um, needs a wire hooked up to it so it can go to the next component, the charge controller. And most solar, most solar panels have a little enclosure box on them where you can connect a wire to. Now this particular wire is a cable that has multiple wires running through it. In this case we have two. It comes with a red and a black. Um, if your panel didn't come with this, this cable wire, most likely the company that sold the solar panel will be able to sell one to you, but you don't have to use their wire. You can. This wire is very similar to uh, the wire that you might use on a sprinkler head. You can find this pretty easily and very, very inexpensive. Let's go ahead and hook up the solar panel to the charge controller. And this one has like these little set screws on it. And all we have to do is just get these in there, positive and negative. There's a positive and a negative symbol on there. And usually in this kind of hookup, uh, red is usually pos positive and black is usually negative. We've got the panel now hooked up to the solar charge controller. That's on this diagram here. This next procedure is a little bit more involved. We're gonna connect, we're gonna build this little harness here. And if you notice, these two wires are connected kind of in a T here and then to a T here. So it's basically two wires are also the same two wires that go to this. So you're charging the battery, but you're also drawing off the battery. First, what we're gonna do is strip all the wires here. We'll strip this one, okay, strip this one. The wires are stripped. Now let's connect this guy. What we want to do here, let's connect up the fuse first. And I'm going to use one of these splicing crimps. You put this one in there and this one in there. But there are other ways of doing it. You can use one of these things that you, you know, might have laying around the house. Everybody's seen these before. And simply twist them together like that. We'll just use that for now. On the other end, this is a little tricky. We want to join these two wires together because this is what we're doing. We're connecting that point right there. That's the one that's going to crimp to the battery. So we take one of these little spade crimps and attach it in there. It should fit. Going to twist it in there, get it in there. You might have to use a yellow one instead if it's too thick. If your wires are too thick, you can get a thicker, a thicker one. So this one's a little tight. So maybe I'll just go ahead and use this one right here. You're just going to need a variety of these things. You can get them in kits, borrow them from your neighbors, whatever. Okay, so we got this first connecting done. Now we got to move on very quickly here. We don't want to board you to tears. Let me get another one right here. And, okay, and then you just use your crimp gun, crimp tool, and then there we go. So what we have now is we have these two pieces right here, okay, flip them around. We have these two pieces. Now we're going to move on to the next part. Time to hook up the battery. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. But the battery, uh, minimum four amps, seven amps, seven amp hours. That's the amp hour is the capacity of the battery. These are AGM 12 volt batteries, and we'll move on from there. So, okay, so now we're gonna take these that we just made right here, and we are going to connect them up to the battery. 
let's plug in the black one to the negative and let's plug the red one into the positive this one even has a mark on it so uh oh what do we have here ah this is the fuse let's put the fuse in okay i'm using a 10 amp fuse um, that should be just fine so now what we have left are these two wires which are these two wires so we'll do a little closer so it's the cigarette lighter adapter wire so now I'm gonna get my cigarette lighter adapter you know just another note I want to put here if you can't find like small pieces of wire like this there there are other options um, instead of having to buy a whole bunch of wire maybe you have some speaker wire laying around the house this is thick enough like this kind of wire I mean, even you can probably use an old extension cord to connect up the wires. So anyway, moving on, let's get this cigarette lighter connected here, this is right here, plug that in. This is the outer shell of the cigarette lighter is, is uh, black and the inner shell, the inner connector is what of uh, the red. So you know, we have to be really careful not to get those reversed or get these reversed or even these reversed. You want positive to go to positive and positive here to go to that inner connector on the lighter. And the same holds true with the negative side. Now the moment of truth. We are finally there. Solar panels out in the sun. Battery is charging. We got power at our receptacle. We have a laptop here. And now we are going to plug this little inverter into here. Okay. These inverters have little fans in them. Not sure if you can hear it or not. Can you hear it? <laughs> anyway, so they're always on. So now we are going to plug it into here, the, the laptop. Okay. I had to move around a little bit so I can get a better lighting on this computer screen. It wasn't working over there. So what I'm going to do is I got this thing kind of halfway plugged in so I can reach it with one hand. I'm doing this by myself, by the way. Um, so ready? We're going to plug this in now. There it goes. Can't hear the fan coming on. And there it is. The light came on on the... You can see that it's charging. The little indicator light is is moving so that means it's charging okay another way of being able to tell if this is actually working or not is using a kilowatt meter kilowatt meters are a good way of seeing how much a certain device or something you're using in your house you're wondering what's using all the power you can plug one of these into it and they'll tell you how much power things use. They'll tell you how much power a light bulb uses and they'll tell you how much power a laptop uses. Okay, let's do this. Let's unplug this. Sorry, wrong way. Unplug this and plug this meter into this here. Let's turn it around so we can get a... Okay. So you can see some lights lighting up there, hopefully. And... Shows zero volts because these things really need to be plugged in before they actually read something. So let's give it a second. Whoops, one of my plugs came undone. That stuff happens. You have to be used to it. So there it is. About 116 volts. It's creeping up a little bit. So this is the volt button. And right here is a watt button. So let's push the watts and see what it is. Wow. Laptops drawing 64, 65 watts. It can get up out as high as 70, I've seen. So there you go. That shows you that the laptop is charging. Very good. Working well. Let's try another experiment. Okay, this might be getting off topic, topic a little bit, but I want to show you this. It's pretty interesting. So let's plug our inverter back in. We try to turn this light on. Okay. 
Did that thing come off again? All right, let's plug the light in. And sometimes these things give us a little hassle. I don't know why. There it goes. So it warms up. Zero volts. How about that? Zero volts. No watts. No volts. Ah, I think I know what's going on. Fluorescent light bulbs have some crazy little electronics in them to make them work. And it's probably confusing this meter so the meter is not registering. But the solar panel, we know, puts out 20 watts and this, what, this bulb is rated at 19 watts. And that's what we call a steady state. They're really close to what's coming out of the panel and what's going into the source or the load. And this is called a load. <laughs> um, very interesting. So as long as that panel is shining on there, out in the, it's out the, getting sun, we can run this light bulb. <laughs> well, of course, we're not going to be running a light bulb in the daytime, but it's just a, just a concept. So let's try another experiment here. Wow, these things still exist. I thought they were illegal, actually, but let's try it. We'll screw it in. And do, oh, okay. All right, now, this doesn't have any crazy switching electronics in it or anything. It's just a straight load, is what we call it. All right, let's see what this does now. Came on. There you go. We can read the voltage. And this is about a 60-watt light bulb, so everything's coming pretty much matching here. We got about 55 watts, 57. Yep, that's pretty close. So it goes to show, you know, just I learned something new here. You can't really measure the power output or the power drain on a fluorescent bulb. And even I tested it on a LED. These have probably special electronics in them too. Um, but LEDs are very, very efficient. Now we're going to talk about troubleshooting. Without, you know, this, if this is the kind of thing that happens when you're messing around with electronics. And you know, I don't want you to go and say, Dean, I looked, watched your long video. You went through all this stuff. I'm kind of confused already. Hopefully you'll figure it out. But when it comes down to it, if, you're not, if it's not working for you, then let's see what we can do to see if we can figure out some of the problems. Okay, first of all, you're going to need one of these meters. Um, there's another thing you can borrow from your neighbor. You don't have to buy one. There's a lot of people and friends that have these. So, what we're going to do is connect, just connect up the wires. It's a standard meter. They all pretty much work the same. They have a red connector and a black connector, and they usually are plugged into the right side of the meter. Okay, so they, what we want to do is we want to set our meter on volts because that's what we're going to measure. We're putting out 12 volts or Actually, batteries, uh, we can explain that. They, they measure between, when they're good, they're 12 and a half to 13, a little over 13 volts. So, let's, I just broke something in this system. And, but I'm gonna show you where to start. It should start all the way at the end, okay? Where you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out something at the very last part of your circuit. And then we move backwards, okay? So that's the way I like to do it anyway. So. Let's plug this into the positive. Remember I said that this connector right here is the positive. And the body, if I didn't mention it, the body of this receptacle is the negative. So, since these wires go to the battery, we should be reading some voltage. We're measuring millivolts. There's basically no voltage coming out of this receptacle. So, you know, everything's connected here. I got my two wires. Basically, everything is connected to the battery. Right, what do you think is wrong with this system? <gasps> oh, I forgot to put the fuse in. That's the problem. Darn it, I've hooked all this up and I forgot to put the fuse in. So let's connect up the fuse. And, oops, this connector came loose and don't get all scared. You have to go back and look what you did. Wow, now we got that 13.6 volts. was what was very good voltage coming out of that battery. So that's step one of w one step of troubleshooting the system. Notice what's going on here. Oh, Dean, what the heck is going on? I mean, you're really messing me up, I tell you. 
I'm reading 20 volts. Why am I reading 20 volts? Where do the 20 volts come from? Guess where it comes from? It comes from the solar panel. The solar panel actually kind of confusing, right? They say they're 12 volt solar panels. In actuality, no. They're actually 20 volt solar panels. They're, they're listed as 12 volt because they charge 12 volt batteries. But in order to charge a 12 volt battery, you actually need more than 12 volts. You need power to go into the battery. So I'm not gonna go much further in that, but what I did do is when I disconnected the battery here, you're reading the power coming out of the solar charge controller now. So when we plug the battery back in, we're putting a load on the charge controller. Now it pulls the voltage down. Another thing you'll notice too is when a battery is charging, you'll see this voltage creep up a little bit. So it's 48, 49, 50. That means there's power going into the battery. That's a really good thing. So you want these volts to be up around 13 volts when you're charging the battery. Okay, moving on. Now what's going on here? Look at the volts on the meter. It's going down. What the heck? It's going down. Why is it going down? Well, the battery is actually settling because that's what they do when the, when the sun goes down. You know, and you're not solar charging anymore. But I don't know why it's not solar charging. I have my solar panel in the sun. And I don't know what's going on here. Oh my goodness, this wire came loose. So that's very important. You gotta make sure your wires are connected. It's, it's what you're gonna get. If you see that meter doing weird things, then, then it's usually something's not connected right or what have you. Um, so now you can see the volts go back up now, which is a good thing. This is what we're looking for. I'm still connected at, to the outer receptacle here. It's probably the best place uh, for seeing the whole circuit working correctly. So what's going on here? This, is a, this battery has a certain level of capacity. It's like a gas tank in your car. It has, say, you know, this one right here is, say it's a four amp hour battery. That means it goes, you know, has a value of four that it can charge up to. And say the output power coming from the solar panel going in and coming out is one amp. The solar panel I mentioned, maybe I mentioned before, the solar panel is putting out one amp. So how do I figure that time it takes? In theory, that battery is a four amp hour battery and we're delivering one amp into it. So that comes out to four hours. If you know high school math, you could probably figure that out. One amp into a four amp hour battery. Cancel it, cancel the uh, amps and it leaves you with hours. So let's, uh, let's, fig let's see if that actually panel is putting out one amp. We can do it two ways. Now, if you're really lucky, your na neighbor has one of these. If with a little bit of ingenuity, you can measure current with one of these, and that's why this wire goes into this slot. Google it, you'll figure out how to measure current. But this one's real easy to measure current. It's not super accurate. We don't need these wires, I'll take them out. It's not super accurate, but it gives you a ballpark. And so this one's on 40 amps, but it needs to be reset and then turned back on, if auto shut off. So it's measuring it, these things you also have to like zero out. So there's zero. Now we're not going to measure, we're going to measure now, this, hopefully this works. I'm going to measure the input current coming from the panel. It's about 0 0.78, 0 0.8 amps. Okay, and the sun is, it's kind of hazy out. So that's, that's a good measurement. I mean, that's, that's what we're putting into the battery right now. Full sunlight would be one amp. So let's see the loss. Okay, there's a little bit of loss in these things. So let's see what's actually going into the battery now. Well, that's really, it's actually not lost, no loss at all. So this charge controller, I have to say, is working pretty good. I'm going to go back. The sun just came out again. Let's see what this is. It's about the same, 88, a little bit higher. So there's a small loss in this. So, so that's, that's another thing to, kind of to, to look at is current flow.
let's go over the pricing of this thing. So starting with the solar panel, we got a 20 watt, 12 volt solar panel here. And like we might've said before, it's a standard solar panel. They're easily found on eBay. And we paid $40 for this one with free shipping. Uh, moving on to the charge controller. There are many different variations of charge controllers out there. They range from $10 to $200. We don't need a $200 charge controller. We're not trying to make some crazy high-tech system here with super efficiency, whatnot. We're trying to go on a budget. So get a solar charge controller that's around $15. Next you'll need is an inline fuse. And these are a couple dollars. I have a couple wires coming off and we'll show you how to splice it in. AGM battery, paid $15 for an AGM battery. And this is for a four amp hour, of course. Uh, I think maybe $20 for maybe a seven amp hour. Little cigarette lighter adapter. This is kind of a cheesy way of doing it. You can get a, a much nicer little adapter that has two very nice molded wires that come off that you can connect directly here. We just had one of these laying around. So $7 for that, for a nice one actually. I saw one for $7 the other day. And then an inverter. Uh, there are many different styles of this particular inverter. And they're about $15 on Amazon. You get free shipping. If you have a Prime account, all this will even help even more. So, okay, what do we got now? We saw we saw all the part prices here, and now the cost, we've added up to about $92. Uh, throw in a miscellaneous thing for some fuses and the fuse and crimps and some wiring, and the total cost that we have calculated comes out to about $97. One last thing I'd like to mention, I'm sorry to drag it on a little longer than I wanted to here, but I want to describe really quickly about these inverters. Um, there are many different types of inverters out there. There are some out there that actually can bypass this little plug thing and connect directly to the battery. So you could chop around, you could see these. Um, you don't need a huge inverter, just like I said, you could keep it you know, 100 watts or more. And I also want to mention that there are also inverters that run on 50 hertz for international use, and it, it can work the same way. Well, we sure hope you enjoyed this video. And look, if you make one of these things, please send us pictures. We'd like to see it and give us some comments. So thank you. Bye-bye.